in quantum computing, which experimental routines are applied to preserve inform or time evolved information? As I've talked about in some of my other videos, and even like have you know demonstrated from the aspect of code that you know you can use in Python with the aid of the open source package uh, from uh, Google Quantum AI that's CERC. Um, this really provides a great type of way for anybody pretty much to try out different types of numerical experiments which underlie the fundamentals of quantum physics that Google Quantum AI and those experts and even looking at how that type of code could be made, you, you know, could be appropriated for Qiskit. That's the open source corresponding open source package provided by IBM. It really demonstrates how despite the fact that this fault tolerant next generation device is still some, you know, some time away or some years away, at least there's at least some, maybe some general expectation about how it would expect how the experts at these big tech companies and even the academic lads would expect this system to behave, you know, if there were a million, uh, <laughs> a million logical qubits, that's, I mean, that's, that's the goal that they've been talking about pretty much a million lo logical qubits because physical qubits, a million, uh, you know, a system with a million physical qubits, it can still be quite susceptible to error. And, um, you know, looking at how one can preserve and maintain, uh, the information that you want to extract from the wave function for some problem that you're time evolving, it pretty much like I've talked to, like I've also mentioned in my other videos and like how I didn't mention this before, but I've seen it in like talks from uh, uh, Nikolai uh, Reshetikin, who he's even talked about and drawn parallels, like how I've even tried to in some of my videos when I talked about, you know, a study from the Cavendish Laboratory in which they were able to synthesize some two dimensional Bose gas, which exhibited localization, meaning that there were points within this two dimensional representation of this of this uh, material that they're able to synthesize uh, experimentally with laser beams, if I remember correctly, that was exhibiting particles or points uh, within within this medium that they synthesize from the lasers that don't interact with any of the neighbors. So it's kind of like an opposite or an antithesis of the easing model because the easing model, it's a classical model of statistical mechanics where you're always trying to bet on the fact that nearest neighbor interactions throughout finite volume or infinite volume, they play a very important role in determining either what's the energy of a configuration that you're trying to sample from this probability measure, or also, um, you know, what you would expect the minimizer, the minimizing state within the ensemble to be for the Hamiltonian, which either can, you know, minimize, you can maximize or minimize uh, the free energy depending upon which signs you take the configuration to have. And um, that really, those principles from statistical physics and thermodynamics, they've still very much come into play when we're talking about this area of quantum physics and how they're trying to, you know, all of these, all of these companies are pouring in and investing a lot of capital, a significant amount of capital, uh, still, even in this economy in which inflation is very high, they're still investing, which is, you know, it's, you know, it's really a very impressive thing because it really demonstrates that although the fact that this technology can be some, you know, years away, um, it's not like nobody would, would not believe in it enough to at least, uh, you know, dedicate some venture capital towards it or capital from the company instead. And, um, but the thing is that when you're thinking about how to operate these systems at the approximate temperature in the right way, it can just be really difficult because you can run into so many problems that I was trying to completely sidestep when you're looking at running some noiseless quantum simulations, say Circ or Qiskit or, you know, because Qiskit it has, you know, from IBM, it kind of has its own type of intrinsic error metric with regards to quantum volume, which is kind of completely different than some error metrics for performance that Google Quantum AI uses. So, and in that way, sometimes even in experiments, you know, in experiments in science in general, a lot of scientists or a lot of professionals, uh, they can try to use, you know, like different types of error metrics to, you know, to, you know, to, to qualify or to describe the performance of whatever experiment or mechanism they're, you know, they're proposing or describing more. And sometimes that can be a little misinformative or it can be just hard to compare what claims of different scientists are saying. But uh, yeah, I'm just really interested to still see where the field goes. And those are just some of my thoughts recently.